Good morning all. Can you put lithium cells like these 18650s in parallel? Well, yes, fairly obviously you can because that's how they're done in power banks. Uh, so let me put these in here, checking very carefully for polarity because I've made this mistake before. In fact, I even made it in this power bank. I obviously put that cell in the wrong way around and melted the spring. So let's put these in. I'll have them with the um, capacities showing like that. Uh, that one and that one. So yeah, all in parallel and everything's fine. And uh, here's another power bank. Let's take the front off this. And again, you can see four 18650 lithium cells, all in parallel. Uh, now, if these are the same capacity as these, two and a half uh, amp hours each, about 10 amp hours in each of these power banks. But what I want to know is, can you put cells of different capacities in parallel? Now, uh, this cell I've tested and it uh, gave the result of about 2,500 milliamp hours. This cell was really cheap. It was about 50p, I think. It's supposed to be a thousand milliamp hours, but it was actually 288. So there's about a 10 to one ratio of capacity with these two cells. Can I put these two cells in parallel? Well, yes, I can. Now it's tempting to think that if you put these two cells in parallel, then when you draw current out of the combined parallel pack, if you like, the smaller cell is going to run out of juice before the bigger cell and therefore its voltage will go down. But of course it can't because they're in parallel. They're strapped together on the negative and they're strapped together on the positive. So how does it work? What actually happens? Well, first of all, let me prove that you can put cells of different capacities in parallel. I mean, I've actually already done it, but I'll do it again. Let's uh, put this one in, making sure again that the polarity is correct. Um, okay, let's put this one in. Right, I've got two cells in parallel there. So what have I actually got? If these are uh, two and a half amp hours each, by putting two cells in parallel, I've actually got a five amp hour cell in effect. Okay, it's two cells in parallel, but they act together as a five amp hour cell. Right, well now I'm gonna put a two and a half amp hour cell in parallel with a five amp hour cell. Yep, that seems to be fine. So what have we got now? Well, we've got two and a half amp hours, two and a half amp hours, two and a half amp hours. We've got a seven and a half amp hour cell. So now I'm gonna put a two and a half amp hour cell in parallel with a seven and a half amp hour cell. And it's all fine. So, not convinced? Okay, let's do a drawing then. Let's put these two cells in parallel. Now we'll call them 2500 milliamp hours and 250 milliamp hours, just to make the numbers easier. That's 10 to one ratio. I'll draw the big one. Uh, I'm actually gonna do them the other way around. I'll draw the big one as a big fat cell and the little one I'll draw as a really tiny thin cell, so they're the same length, but they're obviously massively different in terms of capacity. Let's parallel them up at this end. Let's almost parallel them up at this end, but I'll just leave a tiny gap for the moment. Now let's say we draw the same current out of each cell. So there's the current coming out of the big cell. There's the current coming out of the small cell. Now if that, of course, that's not what happens in reality, but if it did, fairly obviously the small cell's voltage would drop down much more quickly than the large cell. Because that can't happen, because they're in parallel, so they have to have the same voltage, we have to draw a balancing current. If this were to drop down in voltage below the voltage of the big cell, current would actually flow out of the big cell and into the small cell. So let's say that the current is, uh, I don't know, one amp, one. 
then the total current flowing out of the big cell is 1 plus x, this balancing current, we don't really know what that is, the total current flowing out of the little cell, if it were the same 1 amp, would be 1 minus x, because we've got x current flowing back in. So if I join these cells up so they actually are in parallel, in order that their voltages have to stay the same, the voltages we know have to stay the same, in order that they do stay the same, a different current comes out of the bigger cell than the current that's coming out of the smaller cell, and it balances itself out. So, still not convinced? Well, it's hard to believe that the, uh, the current's going to be different flowing out of these cells, but that's the case, and I want to try and show that happening now I can't put this uh, little cell into this power bank because it's just not big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one that I've measured at 2.5 amp hours and one of these uh, cheap eBay ones which we know are fake. And I don't know the capacity of this cell but I know it's probably under 1000. I'm going to put them in parallel in this power bank and I'm going to connect up ammeters to see if we can measure the current flowing out if I put a load into one of these outputs and then maybe measure the current going in if I put a charge lead into this power bank and see that the currents flowing from or to the two different cells are different. So let's put these two cells uh, in this power bank again checking very carefully for polarity. Now I don't even know whether these cells are charged to the same uh, voltage. If they're not, of course, one cell will immediately charge the other one and they'll balance up and that'll probably happen quite quickly. Uh, but let's shove them in like that. So there are the two cells in parallel. Now I need to get some ammeters. So I've got uh, this one here and I've got another one that's similar, if not absolutely identical. And I've got to try and squeeze something between the end of the cell and the spring, it's not going to be easy, is it? And try and measure the currents flowing through each of these two cells. Now, these ammeters, uh, I think, are amps and volts. They've got two uh, displays on there. I think the yellow one is for volts, and I think you read amps between uh, red and black. I'm pretty sure that is. So what I'm going to try and do is put red and black stuck either side of a sort of thin piece of cardboard flatten off these uh, end wires and try and poke that cardboard in between the spring and the cell. Uh, it looks like it might work with the grey one but the red one seems to be a little bit longer so I might have a bit of a bother with that. The other thing is uh, I want to power these ammeters with their own independent power supply so I'm going to need some 9 volt batteries so they're on charge in the uh, C490 9 volt battery charger. Not sure how long that's going to take. Right, well that was quite tricky. Now it seems that you measure current uh, on these ammeter voltmeters on the yellow wire and voltage on the red wire. So I'm measuring the current. Now I'm charging these two cells at the moment because it looked a bit like this one may not have been very well charged. Or oh, there's something else going on. I've got a feeling one of these ammeters can read negative currents and the other one can't. I don't think this one can. But anyway, at the moment, we've got conventional current flow coming into the power bank from another power bank. I'm charging this one. So I'm charging these cells. Current must therefore be flowing in through the positive and therefore through the red wire, uh, round through the ammeter and out of the black wire to the negative line. So both of these ammeters are reading positive currents, I'm pretty certain. And you can see that when charging these cells, we're charging the higher capacity cell at uh, 0.86 amps and the lower capacity cell at just 0.2 amps. Uh, now I want to switch it round. Now if this ammeter won't read negative currents, uh, I'll probably have to reverse these two connections, which I don't mind doing. It's all a bit precarious at the moment. Um, but yes, let's switch off this power bank. In fact, let's Pull the plug. Now you can see that um, this ammeter is still reading a current 
I think because this thing's powered up, that's a lot of current though, 300 milliamps, but this is reading zero, which is a bit odd. Right, let's draw a bit more current. I've got a USB lead here with a little light in it. Uh, let's put that in one of the output sockets. There's one there. And that's not on, so let's press the on switch of the power bank. Is that going to come on? Yes, that's come on. That's interesting. Why are we drawing 0.2 amps with that on? Oh, okay, we are drawing more current with it on. Okay, let's put it back in. But there's no current reading here, and I'm just wondering whether it's because this can't read uh, negative current. So I'm just going to switch these two wires over. And uh, it was at this point that things started to go a bit wrong. Aye, you're not wrong there, lad. Thanks, Granny, as I will illustrate with this little montage of disaster. How annoying. I might even change that ammeter, actually. This one doesn't show negative currents either, which is a real pain. Unless I've got bad connections here again. I don't know. I can't work it out quite irritating this. Oh, that one's gone to zero. What is going on here? Maybe the... <laughs> oh, this is all going horribly wrong, isn't it? Ah, it's all gone wrong. So, is it doing it? Can't see anything happening. I just wasn't expecting them to be quite that wildly different. So, what did we learn from this fiasco? Well, firstly, trying to shove bits of cardboard and bits of wire between the bottom end of the cell and the spring just doesn't really work. You don't get a reliable connection, particularly if you're trying to measure sub substantial currents. Uh, the other thing I learned is that none of these uh, eBay ammeters, I mean, very nice though they are, but none of them can measure current bidirectionally they can only measure, measure positive currents and when that current flow goes the other way these things just sit on zero. Now of course you can use a DVM and in the end I got all my DVMs out and tried to do it with that but they're big and bulky and these, um, these probes just take up far too much space. No, I want another solution to this. So I've ordered some 18650 battery holders and for measuring current I'm going to use this. It's the INA219 DC current sensor. Now I'm going to need uh, two of these or more if I do this with more cells. Um, this thing can measure I think up to about three and a half amps. Uh, so it's about perfect really for uh, 18650s. It's got uh, a 12-bit A to D inside this little 8-pin chip. Uh, the data comes out on I squared C. So it's a really convenient, small and accurate uh, and of course more probably more importantly bi-directional uh, current sensor. So uh, yeah, here's the data sheet. It's a zero drift, well that's very handy, bi-directional current and power monitor and in fact it also measures voltage so it's a really handy little thing it measures current and voltage and calculates power using an internal multiplier uh, with an I squared C interface so time for a new project a uh, little OLED display probably go with I squared C uh, the I squared C current sensor which can also measure voltage up to 26 volts I think it is and calculate power so we can have voltage, current and power on the display, uh, a little Arduino Pro Mini. And what I'll be creating is essentially something like one of these watt meters, but with a nicer display. Won't have quite the uh, voltage and current capability of this. In fact, nothing like the voltage and current capability of this, but it'll be a lot more accurate. Uh, I've got a feeling these are bi-directional as well. I can't quite remember. Um, similar uh, as well to this. This is a little watt meter that measures voltage, current and power. But um, I blew this one up and I think it's because I put a current through it in the reverse direction. So I don't think this one can measure current. It can't measure anything now. 
But yeah, new project, uh, Arduino current meter. Right, on with the robot build. Now it seems that the uh, solar panel with motor attached uh, drops down through that hole and then that sticks on there with a couple of these double-sided foamy pads which sit into these two positions here. So that's what I will do next. So if you enjoyed this video, well I liked it, oh thanks Granny, a uh, couple more videos up here that you might want to watch. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel then click my face and this image of me about 15 years ago takes you through to my other channel, Julian's Reviews. Like or dislike with the buttons below. Cheerio!